Hey, good evening, YouTube. I figured I'd make a quick video on this latest project of mine. This actually doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my boss. It's a National NC-183D General Coverage Shortwave Receiver. It pulls from the bottom of the standard AM band to 31 megahertz, or I'm sorry, not 30, yeah, general to 31 megahertz plus the 6 meter band at 54 megahertz. So, um, there you have it. He actually found this at the dump. As you can see, it's got one incorrect knob there, but other than that, it's uh, not in bad shape at all. This is as found. It's not been cleaned up at all, um, which uh, kind of surprises me because it's, he said it was sitting right on top of the scrap pile at the dump. I mean, you can see the paint's beat up on it, and, you know, it's not brand new, but it was made in 1956, so, you know, it's allowed. Uh, get a shot of the inside here. Uh, I have not cleaned the inside of this up at all. These are all the tubes that were in it when it was brought over here. They are all fine. Push pull 6v6 output. Uh, tuning meter. That's the tuning mechanism under there. A whole bunch of tubes there. And that's an accessory socket for um, either an FM. A detector or something they call the selecto jet, which I don't really know what that does. It's some sort of a audio uh, filter thing for improved selectivity, I believe. Um, that's the crystal filter, so I guess it works in conjunction with this control here. Um, let me flip it over real quick and I'll give you a look at the bottom. Alright, here we go. Recapped it. Um, replaced a whole bunch of out of tolerance resistors. I just counted up the list. I think there's 22 of them that I replaced. And I don't know how many caps. There's like 25 or so caps that I replaced. They're old oil caps leaking. They're leaking goo. You can see there's a bunch of ceramic caps in there yet, but they really don't go bad. And none of them give me any indication that they're a problem, so I'm going to leave them be. Uh, it's a mica cap down there that they don't really go bad either. And, again, they don't seem to be giving me any indication that there's a problem. So, I'll replace all the failure-prone parts and uh, see what we got. It does work. It works pretty well, actually. Uh, I still have to replace that resistor, that resistor, and the filter can cap. I just don't happen to have those, val those uh, parts in my parts box right at the minute, but I'm going to place an order here very shortly and uh, get this thing back in action. Uh, I did put new modern safety caps there, as you can see those yellow things. To the old ceramics were going bad, and it lit me up when I touched it, so out they go. But uh, Anyway, uh, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. There's a lot of room to work in this thing. I don't know how well it shows up, but uh, I was able to square off most of the most of the component leads there, all the parts kind of lay in there nice. Um, I really like working on uh, general coverage receivers and communications equipment like this. They're just, they're built so nice, there's a lot of room in here. Um, you know, they, they don't layer the parts in like uh, a lot of tabletops do. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it's all, you can work on it. So, that's not too bad. And, uh, in case you didn't happen to notice, uh, there's the, I'm assuming that's a, I don't know what this is, I guess maybe that's an inspected buy number there, 72056, I assume that's the build date and uh, the serial number. I don't know if this is uh, written on there from the factory or if someone did this when they got it or or what's going on, but, you know, so I'm going to guess that this thing was made in 1956 because I've got nothing to, to tell me otherwise, but it seems to be pretty nice machine. It's, uh, it works well, and it's not in bad shape. Pretty good find for on the dump. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day.